Hi, my name is Alicia Halberder and I'm the Agriculture and Natural Resources Agent for Baker County. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about stink bugs and corn, some of the problems that they can cause, and how to address them. So first we're going to talk about some of the types of stink bugs we might see. Today we're standing in front of a field corn plot, but you can find these stink bugs in sweet corn, popcorn, or field corn. Two of the main species of stink bugs that we have in Florida are southern green stink bug and the brown stink bug. There are other types as well, but these are the two you'll find in the highest populations in corn and other crops here in the state. Stink bugs can be an issue based on their feeding habits. So they have sucking mouth parts that they actually inject into plant material like a fine needle. And these can cause issues because it's actually causing physical damage to the plant and ruining cells, whether the plant is in a young growing stage or mature growing like these behind me. These fine needle-like mouth parts also inject salivary enzymes into the plant, which help break down plant material for the insect to digest, but can cause an issue as well, as this can kill growing points, cause stunted plants when they're young, and can also cause some ear malformations. Timing really matters. So plants that are pre-tassel, especially in the young vegetative stage, high insect populations and high stink bug populations in those plots can cause a lot of issues with stunted plants. It can actually kill the growth points in the young plants, which can cause death in the rows, whether that be large amount or just a small amount in the plot. We can see some economic damage to that for us as well. And we can have issues in post-tasseling stage after the ear has begun to form and our stink bugs are feeding on that ear and they're actually damaging kernels. So each silk that is leading to those kernels can get damaged. Too much damage in the ear can cause malformations or what we would call sea ears or banana ears where the ear will actually turn over and can either be completely unharvestable or just create a low yield amount in our plots. So we really wanna pay attention to how much of our stink bug populations are in our plots and whether or not um, that's something that we need to treat for. So some of the conditions that we see where high stink bug populations may be occurring are the edge effect. So that's really important that we're not only looking at our stink bug populations on the edge of our plots where those insects are gonna be in higher densities, but walking into the field and seeing whether or not damage is occurring further, you know, 100 or so feet into the plot not just on the edge here, because that is where you're going to see most of your uh, damage from pests. You can also have higher populations based on the surrounding crops. So in areas where watermelons, tomatoes, or other crops that attract those insects are being grown, you're going to see higher damage on your corn. So you're gonna have to determine what your economic threshold for treating is going to be there. We also see as well corn that's grown closer to a wood boundary line is going to have higher insect populations since those wood lines are generally where those stink bugs are overwintering. They're going to come out in the spring as soon as our corn here is starting to pop up and starting to feed and you can see higher damage especially in the beginning of spring when those plants are younger here in North Florida. We want to make sure that we're paying attention to all of those conditions and mitigating those factors before we're determining whether or not we actually need to go out with an insecticide and spray. If we determine that our insect populations are high enough, then we need to again go back to our economic threshold. So are they warranting a treatment simply because of yield loss and how is that yield loss going to impact our economics? So generally we like to think of pre-tasseling a 25% economic threshold, so one bug every four plants, is a good way to determine whether or not you need to go out with an insecticide and treat. That's enough damage to where it can cause an economic impact for you in, your, in regards to plant loss. And post-tasseling, damage can cause a lot of yield loss, and so if we're having 50% infestation, so one bug every two plants, that's a high enough economic threshold that we may need to go out and treat. Again, we need to determine whether or not that's just on the edge of the plot, whether that's distributed evenly throughout the plot, and whether that damage is actually causing enough of an economic threshold that it's going to justify 
the cost of treating and whether or not you're going to be able to treat. Obviously, post-tassel corn is very tall, so whether you have a high clearance tractor or some way to treat through irrigation or whatnot, we have to be able to determine those factors of whether or not we're actually going to be able to treat and how that's gonna affect the bottom line. Stink bugs can be a major issue in corn, but at the same time, they're going to be present in the plot. We just have to determine whether or not the damage they're causing is enough to justify treatment or not and be able to recognize those uh, signs and symptoms of how they're damaging those plants and again, whether or not that's going to be a total loss of a plant or just reduce yield in that plant. If you have any more questions about stink bugs in corn, I'd be happy to answer your questions. You're welcome to reach out to me or any of your local county extension agents and we'd love to help you.